When I first started building ornithopters, information was hard to find, and the existing designs were complicated. So in 1993, I published the first version of the Freebird Ornithopter. The Freebird helped thousands of people get started in building their own ornithopters, and it formed the basis for many later designs. But watch out for those videos on how to build an ornithopter from things you find around the house. If you don't use the right materials, it's not going to fly. To get started on this project, go to the Ornithopter Society website. Click where it says Free Plans and print the Freebird instructions. All the materials are listed and you can find them in a hobby shop. A craft store like Michael's or Hobby Lobby won't have everything you need. If you don't have a hobby shop in your area, you can order from SIG Manufacturing. Another option is to buy the kit version that I designed. It's similar to the Freebird, but it's even easier to build and you won't have to go shopping for parts. These are all the parts for the Freebird Ornithopter. The balsa wood I've already cut. These are the wing spars, which are 1 8 inch by 8 inches long. 1 8 inch for anyone outside the United States is about 3 millimeters. The tail sticks are 3 30 seconds by 7 inches. And this is the motor stick or the body of the Ornithopter. That's 5 inches long by 16 by 1 8 and this is the strut that holds the crank that moves the wings. That's one and one sixteenth by one half by one eighth. We have a rubber band here. This is a special type of rubber that's made for model airplanes. Don't use office rubber bands because the model will not fly correctly. These are the connecting rods which are made of one thirty second inch plywood. There's a three millimeter plastic bead and some aluminum tubing. This is 1 16th inch diameter with a 1 32nd inside diameter, which fits these wires, which are 1 32nd steel music wire. Two inches long, two and three quarters inches long. And this is a piece of insulation stripped from 22 gauge wire. I also have the model tissue here for the wings and tail. You can use a plastic film if you would rather, but you're going to find it's harder to attach to the model. It's not going to look as nice and it might not fly as good depending on which kind you choose. The two longer wires are going to be bent into hooks, which hold the rubber band. We'll cut the aluminum tubing by rolling over it with a razor blade. We need three pieces that are half an inch long. It's very important that you get the ends of the aluminum tubing smooth and squared off. So we're gonna sand them. Sure you check and get a really level squared off end. One of the metal tubes needs to be roughened so it can be glued onto the body of the ornithopter. We're going to do that with a small saw like this. I'm actually putting some grooves into the side of the metal tube but not all the way through to the inside. I'm securing that roughened aluminum tube onto the balsa wood strut piece. To do that I'm going to secure it with a small piece of masking tape, then a drop of super glue. Make sure you don't get any glue inside the tube. That would make the mechanism inoperable. Next we have to drill some holes in the wood. For the wing spar we're going to make a hole three quarters of an inch from one end of each wing spar. I'll mark the hole first with a straight pin. And then you can use the sharp end of the wire that you cut to drill the hole further. This takes a little while. Obviously it would be easier if you have a 1 32nd inch drill. Get the job done a lot quicker. Eventually you'll get the hole to go all the way through. This one's going to be a little more tricky. For the motor stick, we have to make a hole 
3 8 from the end going straight down into the wood long ways, okay? Balsa wood varies quite a bit in density and if you get hard balsa, this is really going to help to have a drill to make this particular hole. The connecting rods likewise are pretty hard to drill. We have to make two holes in the connecting rods exactly one and three quarters inches apart. So we'll mark those with a ruler using the straight pen. Then I have a larger T-pin that I'm going to use here to really finish up these holes. Now all the holes are drilled and the parts should look like this. Next we're going to cut out the tissue for the wings and tail. First make sure you've printed this actual size, that should be 7 inches there. Next we'll trace the wing outline onto the tissue paper. Draw the center line. Then I'm going to flip the tissue over. Line it up again and trace the other wing. And we'll draw the tail outline. Now working right on the instruction sheet that I printed out from the website, I'm going to cut the tail stick. We're going to put some glue on these. Just a very thin layer of glue down one side. Set it in place on the tissue with the beveled end at the tip. Do the same for the other one. And I'll put a little extra glue right at the tip of the bevel where the two parts come together. And we'll set this aside so it can dry. Next we'll bend the wire pieces that hold the wings in place. You can bend it right on the plan sheet here. The important thing is this middle part should be 7 8 inches. So we'll line this up about the way it shows on the diagram. Bend the wire. Make sure you get a nice 90 degree angle there. Once you verify that it's the correct location, and I'll put the ruler on there. It should be, like I said, 7 eighths. Try to anticipate where the wire is actually going to bend. And go ahead and make the bend. These are going to go in the wing spars, so it goes through the little hole there. Put some glue along there. Get it around the hole too. Drop that on, press it down, smooth out the glue. Okay. We have some tissue paper. We're going to put a thin layer of glue on the tissue. Wrap it around the wing spar to hold everything in place. Another way you can do this if you prefer is to wrap thread around there. I'm not sure which way is better. They both work fine. And make sure it's all pressed down smooth and we'll let that dry for a little while. We'll do something similar with the body stick. The wire hook that we bent earlier is going to go through the hole. Push it about all the way in. Put the pliers here.
The opening of the hook is toward the back, that's important. Then we're going to bend this to 90 degrees. Now we'll wrap that with tissue paper in the same way as we did for the wings. We need to make one more bend after this is inserted through. Hold it with the pliers right at the tip and bend it to 90 degrees. You're not putting any pressure on the wood here. Otherwise that will probably break something. It should look like that, okay. The next step is one of the trickiest in this whole process. We're going to bend the crank wire that moves the wings. To do that, you have to first insert this through the aluminum tube that's been glued to the strut piece. The plastic bead goes on there now. And then we're going to bend the crank. Make the first bend just 90 degrees straight up toward you. Make the second bend three eighths of an inch. Bend that one straight up. Now we have two 90 degree bends. Bend it sideways now. This is looking at it from the front. Then we'll bend back forward again. Now the whole strut piece is going to get glued onto the body stick or the motor stick. Just glue that on there, then let it dry. I've taped the aluminum tubes onto the top of the body here, and I'm going to glue those in place with super glue exactly the way I did the crank bearing tube. You have to be careful not to get any inside the tube. When you wrap this with tissue, just put a little extra glue at the critical stress areas. Especially right here on the crank. To put the tail on the model, we'll put a drop of glue right here. And the little bent end of the wire on the back of the body goes in there. I'm going to wrap just a small piece of tissue around that joint to make it a little more stable. Then we'll set this aside to dry. Let this dry with the ornithopter laying straight on its back. Make sure that the body is straight up and down. You can set your glue bottle there next to it to make sure it stays upright. Even though it doesn't seem like it, we're actually very close to being finished here. The wings have to go onto the body like this. If there's any glue in the way, make sure you Get that off of the wire before you put it in so it doesn't cause friction. These should move very freely at this point. If they don't, something's wrong. The first connecting rod goes on the left wing, which is on our right because we're facing the bird. And you have to wiggle it around the crank 
so that it goes to that point. The second connecting rod goes on the right wing, which is on our left. Once you've done this, you should find that the wings move almost symmetrically when you turn the crank. Notice if they are switched, the wings move very asymmetrically. That would indicate that you have the connecting rods on the wrong wings. I'll secure the connecting rods in place with short pieces of the rubber tubing, also known as wire insulation. Don't stab yourself in the finger when you do this. And don't press it all the way up against the connecting rod. You want to leave it a little bit loose so there's less friction. We'll go ahead and do all three wires like this. I finished putting the insulation onto the wires. At this point you'll notice that the wings can actually slide in and out and that's not good. It's going to be secured in place though when we glue the wing tissue on. You want to make sure that the wings are all the way back in their socket and then we'll go ahead and glue the tissue onto the wings. Like we did for the tail, I'm going to apply a thin layer of glue to the top of the wing spar. Spread it out with my finger. Position the wing tissue in place on top of the wing spar. Again, making sure that the wing spar is all the way in its socket. Do the other side. Notice the wings are in their down position right now. That prevents the tissue from becoming too tight right in this area when the wings move. If you were to glue the tissue on with the wings in the raised position, they wouldn't be able to move fully. We're going to save this part for last, which is gluing the tissue to the body or the motor stick. Run the glue along there. And here you just let the tissue go down and center itself along the body. That seems to create the best balance between the left and right wings rather than trying to measure it out accurately. Before you can fly the ornithopter, you will have to create an upward bend in the tail. Otherwise, it's going to nosedive. So to do that, you can take the wire here and carefully bend it. Maybe a little more than that. About to that angle. You will adjust the angle as needed. Start off with uh, you know, just a slight upward bend. I'll show you how to tie the rubber band next. Put the two ends together. Tie it in a knot. Pull it tight. Take the two ends and tie those together. That locks it in place so that it can't slip out. And just make sure it's secure. We're going to actually double the rubber band like this when we put it on the model. If you don't do that, you won't have enough torque. The model won't fly. First put the knot in the back on that back hook there. And then hook the front of the rubber band onto the front hook. You should always oil the rubber band with 
you know, vegetable oil or some kind of lubricant before you wind it up. That's going to give you much longer flights. The rubber band will last longer. The ornithopter will fly a lot better. This is how you wind up the rubber band. You hold very tightly on the strut and turn the crank. It'll unwind in the opposite direction and flap the wings. Try a few test flights at low power before you wind the rubber band up all the way. If the ornithopter only wants to fly in a tight circle, then it won't be able to gain any altitude. The way you fix this is you add a little bit of weight to one of the wing tips by inserting a piece of sharp wire into the wood. With proper building and adjustment, the Freebird can fly really nice, but it is intended as an introduction. At the Ornithopter website, you can learn how to build more advanced ornithopters with radio control and longer flight times. Also, watch some of my other videos on YouTube to learn more about ornithopters.